Hello, boys and girls. It's Mr. Giamini. I don't know how this is going to work out. We'll give it a whirl and see where it goes from here. Want to touch base with you today about area and circumference of circles. Now, I am going to share what you see here. I'm hoping you see it. I'm going to share what you see here in Google Classroom. It's a little PowerPoint that you can use. Just kind of want to go over some basics here. A circle is a set of points in a plane that are a fixed distance from a given point called the center. Think about that. We're talking about diameter and we're talking about radius. That center point, that point where the diameter either the diameter runs through the center point and touches opposite ends of the opposite edges of the circle, opposite ends of the circle, opposite sides of the circle, however you want to phrase that. <clears throat> and then it, we also have the radius, which starts or originates at the center point and then extends through the a point on the edge or side or not side but edge of the circle so we have a radius connects the center to any point on the circle and a diameter connects two points on the circle and passes through the center now again you won't see all the multiple points that are on the circle it's just they're understood to be there all right now here's a nice illustration here we have the center point which is an orange we have the blue line, which is our diameter. It goes from one point passing through the center point to the other. And then we have our radius, starting the center point and extending out to a point that lays on a circle. Our circumference is the distance around the entire circle. Sometimes kids like to think that is the perimeter of the circle. We don't use the word perim perimeter. We're talking about circles. We use the word circumference. And if you struggle with the diameter, the diameter is just whatever the radius is doubled. And obviously, then the radius is one of the diameters, half of that. All right. Now, we have some words here. It says the circumference C of a circle is pi times the diameter or 2 pi times the radius R. All right. Now, all you're doing here is you're doubling the radius. We're not squaring it. We are doubling it. You'll see that in the circumference of a circle, the capital C is, the C is capitalized. So we have here, we have to find the circumference. We have pi times six. You could also do two pi times three. Now, this answer here, you'll notice, is an approximation. So they're, they're going to use 3.14 as pi. That is an approximation. To be precise, when you're using area or circumference of a circle, for this one, the precise answer would be six pi. Because pi is an irrational number going on forever, it's known to be, it's going, It's going, not going to give you a really clear answer if you use 3.14 because that's not precise. The precise answer for this would be 6 pi. Or if you want to do this, the approximation is 18 and 8 tenths units because they don't tell us what the 6 or the 3 are as far as giving us a unit, whether it's inches, meters, centimeters, etc. All right. Now, if I take a look, pi is an irrational number. Hey, there's also approximated by the rational number 3.14 and 22 divided by 7. Now, here's the question. Where did they come up with this number pi? It just didn't pop out of the air. Pi originated from somewhere. And I want you to think about how pi is applicable to all circles. Any circle you see, whether in nature, uh, and again, we're talking two-dimensional here uh, on one plane, whether you're talking in nature or on a piece of paper or maybe even you have a coaster at home that are circular coasters, that circle, that 3.14 is somehow pulled from that circle. And any circle you see, same thing, even your bike wheel, if you talked about your, your bike wheel or if you have a little scooter, same thing, somehow pi is pulled derived from that circular object. There's your little challenge. Now it says, and unfortunately you're still the answers for these, but it says find the circle of uh, find the circumference of each circle, both in terms of n and to, or both in terms of pi. Sorry, that's a pi symbol, and to the nearest tenth. So we have if a circle with a radius of four meters, we could use that two pi times r. My guess is many of you would know that if the radius is four, the diameter is double that eight. So you don't have to go two pi, you could go eight pi. Now, 8 pi meters, that would be the precise answer. The 25 and 1 tenth meters, that would be the approximation. Notice we're talking about circumference. Just as we talk about perimeter, it's a linear unit of measure. We're going in a line, if you will. Think about using the, a piece of string to go around the circle. It's linear. It's not square units, as we talk about with area. 
And then we have a circle with, uh, circle with a diameter of three and three tenths feet. Again, we have pi times diameter. The diameter is given. So the precise answer would be 3.3 pi, and then the unit measure feet. Or if you want to use approximation, we multiply three and three tenths times three and 14 hundredths. You get that approximation of two and four tenths feet. All right, here we have another example. Find the circumference of each circle, both in terms of pi and to the nearest tenth. So here we have a circle with a radius of eight centimeters. In my head, I'm only thinking if I need diameter for pi, uh, for circumference, I'm going to double the radius, times it by two, so now I know that the diameter is 16. So you guys are probably capable of jumping directly to this precise answer of 16 pi centimeters. And again, if it asks you for an approximation, we're going to take that 16 times it by three and 14 hundredths and get 50.2 or 50 and two tenths centimeters. Again, linear. We're going in, I go, I know it's not a line, but we're going around all the points in this on this edge of the circle. We're going to take that piece of string and wrap it around the entire circle. That's why we're talking linear units here. We have here circle with a diameter of four and a quarter inches or four and 25 hundredths. We're taking a look. The diameter is already given. So I'm going to go, the precise answer would be four and a quarter pi inches. Don't forget that label. And that is approximately 13 and three tenths inches. Now, in a Google form, you can. it might be tough to, for you to use the pi symbol. What I would put instead, 4.25 or four and a quarter pi, lowercase pi, then space, and then in. Uh, don't worry about the period at the end. All right. So again, if I were putting this in a Google form, it'd be four and a quarter or four and 25 hundredths pi, lowercase, no space between the digit five and the letter p, space, and then in. All right. Now we can also talk about the area of a circle. Now, area, we're talking about the inside. The inside, we're talking about that face of that circle, how much area that is covered, at, 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 how much area that occupies, if we say. So the area of circle is pi times the square of the radius, or radius squared is probably easier for us to say. We take a look here. They give us a radius of three. They give us pi times radius squared, or pi times three squared. Three squared is nine. The precise answer is nine pi. They don't give us units, so nine pi units. Or the approximation, because I'm multiplying nine times three and 14 hundredths, would be 28 and three tenths units. And here is the algebraic way to look at it. That's, we call that our formula. We call that an equation, actually, once I substitute values into it. Here's some examples. Circle with a radius of four pi. Automatically, I'm thinking radius. I'm thinking pi times radius squared. Four squared is 16. So the precise answer is 16 pi square inches or 50 and 2 tenths square inches. And that, again, is an approximation. That's why we have those two wavy lines, not equal signs. With a diameter of 3 and 3 tenths. Okay, now radius we need, not the diameter. The radius is doubled, or I'm sorry, the diameter is double the radius. So now we're going to take that diameter and divide it by 2, which I did here for us. So 3 and 3 tenths divided by 2 gives us 1 and 65 hundredths. I take 1 and 65 hundredths squared, which is kind of tedious. But it gives me two and 7,225, what is that, 10 thousandths, 10, 100 thousand, yes, pi square meters. All right. And again, if I were to put it in a Google form, it would be after this five, no space, pi space square meters, sq space m. The approximation is eight and a half square meters. Try another example here. Circle with the radius of eight centimeters. In my head, I'm calculating for area. I'm automatically squaring eight. Eight squared is 64. The approx or the precise answer, excuse me, 64 pi square centimeters. The approximation, 201 square centimeters. All right. Now they give us some on a coordinate plane. Nothing to be worried about here. All right. And then we have some other examples again on the coordinate plane. I want to look for, ooh, I like this. A Ferris wheel has a diameter of 56 feet and makes 15 revolutions per ride. Okay, a revolution, if I think about that circle, here's the starting point. As that circle rotates around as you're riding your bike, when it comes back to the beginning of that spot, so if I put a piece of tape or a little mark on the tire with a marker, when it made one full revolution, it means that mark would be back at the top of the circle or the top of that 
where the brakes are, if you will. So that's a revolution. So a, 50, uh, a Ferris wheel has a diameter of 56 feet and makes 15 revolutions per ride. How far would someone travel using or during a ride? Use 22 divided by 7 for pi. All right. Now, the diameter is 56. If I am to make 56, if it's the diameter is 56 feet, to find the circumference, the distance around that Ferris wheel, 56 times 22 and 22 sevenths. And again, approximation, that gives us approximately 176 feet. So one complete revolution is 176 feet, but the ride makes 50 or 15 of these. So we're going to take 176 feet and times it by 15. Hope that helps out. All right. So I'm going to stop here. I hope that made sense for you guys. Um, hopefully this worked out, and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, take care. Bye.